Our goal for the channel is to bring the delicious back into your food business by sharing tools, systems and ideas to combat the stresses of hospitality based businesses. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, your home for online food business consulting and management. Today we're going to be talking about some of the emotional distress that can occur when owning a food business. I've seen owners over the years suffer from addiction and many of my colleagues as well, I've been there myself. It brings on anxiety, it brings on depression, it can bring on downward spiral of negative conflicts between co-workers and owners. This comes to the high pressure nature of the hospitality industry. When I worked in London, it was so competitive. Uh, I built up a level of eczema that I'd never seen before. I uh, was virtually an insomniac and I felt extremely sore from head to toe most of the time. Whilst I never really thought that I should complain about it, in retrospect, I realized that what I was doing, I was killing myself slowly over a long period of time. And I've seen this in my fellow hospitality workers as well, who often turn to drink or drugs. They often turn to taking their fears and angers out on colleagues or employees. And I know it's a hard topic to talk about, but I think it's really one that gets in the way of a profitable business. Sometimes people just go through dark periods in life and that's okay. Most of the time we get out of it alive but some of the time it takes to grips and that can lead to serious issues like suicide. These issues are not specific to the hospitality industry, but it's just the industry that I've been within for the last 20 years and it's very dear to my heart and I'd love for the people within that industry to have a professional life that is free of these anxieties and depressions. There are some amazing recovery tools that have been devised scientifically over a long time and been researched quite heavily by way of that research, these tools have been created so that we can de-stress our body, de-stress our mind, de-stress our emotional being. We can actually set about going to work every single day to be happy, to be progressive and productive. As a business owner, I would urge you to take a look at your own mental and physical health. See if you're leading at the front by living a life that puts out great positive energy, that puts out great leadership skills, that puts out great creativity and progressive systems development. I know I used a few big words there, but at the crux of it, if you own a business, people look to you for inspiration and motivation. They look to you for a sense of home. They look to you for a sense of camaraderie, some place to learn, not just to be a number in a factory, so to speak. And even at the lower level of food, the fast food part of the industry, there's a hell of a lot of leadership and systems that have been put in place to optimize productivity and ultimately revenue. We can leverage those systems in a pragmatic sense, although being productive does produce more stress. And those stress factors build up over time. And if they're not worked on, they can lead into more serious psychological issues. Some of the things that people would really get benefit from, that I have personally gotten great benefit from, are learning how to breathe properly, simply by choosing to breathe through the nose, through the day, and avoiding mouth breathing, really helps the amount of oxygen get into your blood, help you to think correctly. It allows you to drop your shoulders from that high stress position into a more relaxed position. There are more invasive methods of breathing, Tumo breathing or Wim Hof breathing, inner fire breathing, and those are great methods too. Other amazing things are as simple as going for a walk. Get up half an hour earlier than you need to do, put your walking shoes on and go for a brisk walk around your place close to sunset and sunrise. Having light from the sun into your eyes for around 15 minutes early on in the day and then later on in the day is great for regulating your circadian rhythms and for a general sense of well-being. Now that might take care of the personal stress system on the nervous system, but what about the business stress? What about the interactions with other people? What about the money side of things? Well, we need to have systems around that too. Strong communication lines between those involved where you set a target and a goal and you move into a system where you work together in order to try and attain that goal. Understanding that people do have personality clashes, that they do lash out, they do get upset, 
and looking for a way to mitigate that. Looking for what went wrong with that personality clash yesterday and moving into tomorrow where you're looking to bridge the gap and work together as a team. You could do this by having a little sit down and understanding that there's a goal at play. And the goal is, is to work together and to iron out any discrepancies between the people. Why it's worth doing this is because finding good staff that can work together is extremely difficult. There's two components to that. Firstly, there's the finding of the staff. It isn't difficult to find someone to fill the role, but it is difficult to find someone to fill the role who wants to do a good job. Key word, wants. When you find that someone, you want to nurture them. You want to encourage them. You want to work with them. You don't want to antagonize them and beat them into your culture. Often pre-existing cultures are tribal and they are flawed. And finding that a new staff member conflicts with that is very common and shouldn't be ignored. In the hospitality realm, there are a lot of creative people. Creativity and creative people means it's not a linear direction to get from one point to another. Often it's a roundabout way. It's a little bit of a, a long journey and that is very hard to build cohesion around. So you've got different personalities with different mindsets around how to get the job done. But when you put them together, they actually can be super powerful in creating a product, a service and deliver it to customers who really enjoy what they're doing. The key is, is to have great leadership and communication within that area to know who's doing what. So roles and responsibilities and the confines of how it should be done, the quality points, the measures, what's the standard of, of uh, quality that we want to put out, how many of these things do we need and when do we need to buy. Set an example, show people how to do it, hands-on, as well as having standard templates like recipes. What I've found over the years is that chefs in particular are often viewed as a number in a, in a big machine. And now that staffing issues have risen to a huge level, more importantly are the chefs in the industry. Less and less people are getting in because there are other more high paying trades and different vocations that can be done online or stay at home. So having adequate staff training and cultural training within a business is more important than ever. That means as an owner, you may need to pivot out from your remote access position and be a bit more hands-on with your staff, but not necessarily in the technical aspect, but more in the personability aspect. Checking in with your staff every single day and letting them know that you're on their side, that the business supports you and that there are expectations around that support. Being clear in what you expect from your staff, when you want it, how you want it and all the rest of it is great. And they'll reciprocate with the incentives that you give to them. If things aren't going so well, definitely address them and work out a plan of action. The plan of action is really key and that will, will depend on your management system. Sometimes people work better in a more autonomous fashion. Sometimes they need to be handheld. It's up to you as the leader of the group to work out which version of those two do they fall under. Now, I know that building a culture, building a professional team and building a business is extremely difficult. However, not doing it can also be extremely difficult. Some of the problems you may face could be as significant as conflict within the business, bankruptcy and ultimately losing the business. So if you identify that there's some issues, mental, physical, spiritual, stress related within your business, I advise you to address them, but have a clear, concise system of how you'd like to address them before you enter in, into any correspondence. To say a big salute to everyone out there who has gone through mental battles when it comes to any form of industry. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports people with mental stress, all of the professionals around the world, all of the individuals who have put their hands up and said, I'm not doing so great and they've done something about it. And I'd like to encourage those who are currently listening to this and going, I've had some addictive problems. I've had some stress issues. I've had some mental battles. And maybe go and seek the help that you need. You can start out by self-learning. You can reach out to a professional and have a initial consultation remotely and even online. You can talk to support groups, you can meet up with support groups, and you can even see a seasoned professional. What I love about this specific part is, is that by dealing with the stress, 
it brings back the ability to the individual to be creative. For me personally, creativity is one of the most important things to me. When I'm stuck in a rut, feeling that stress, I lose the ability to be creative. And that's what makes me look happy to everyone else. It's what makes me feel happy and content. I get a massive buzz out of being creative in the way that I am with people, the way that I express my art through food, or through language, or videos, or music. And to lose that is heartbreaking. So if you're feeling like you're missing out on the zest of life in your creativity, feel free to drop us a line. Feel free to comment down below and say, I took the plunge and I went out and I did something about it. I will salute you. If you like the content or you wanna know something more, please let me know down in the comments. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for more updates on all things improvement within the food business realm. Until we next speak, I'll see you in the next video.